accountability is being life on life with others, uh, opening up uh, your life to others, telling them the problems and the struggles that you have, asking them to walk with you and counsel with you, having them there if you feel um, temptation that you can call them. They'll answer the phone any time of night or day. Well, as I've gotten older and made the mistakes that I've made in my life, um, I, I have to begin to weigh out if I want to continue to make those mistakes, which I still am, uh, or do I want to have a healthier life, a, a healthier walk? And the only way to do that is by opening myself up and allowing these people to speak truth into my life, uh, to care about me. And that's the biggest part of it, is the fact that they care about me. Um, and I know that when they ask me about things, what I'm doing, what I'm not doing, they do it because they love me. And that's the biggest part of it. I, I know that they love me. Most men that, uh, uh, that know me as I am, I think they're very open. I think it's more a personal uh, desire for myself to open up and say, hey, what do you think about if I do this? And I don't want to feel like, like you said, you know, um, I don't want to feel that I'm exposed. Uh, I don't, I don't want to see them my ugliness. You know, I only want to have them see how nice I am. I'm a good friend. I like, you know, to talk. I like, you know, to have fun, but not the bad parts of me. I think that's very hard to let go. I mean, it's just looking at me at the very top of that uh, mountain, but not the entire mountain. The reason to be in accountability for me is that we're in a battle and the devil is after our soul and that we are weak. We are weak vessels. So through the Holy Spirit, through prayer, which is important, but also through accountability, somebody that's there, that can be there at the other end of the line, that can, um, you can call and share, uh, or can come after you when you've fallen. And that's a mutual type of uh, arrangement where we share life together, we share our challenges together, hold each other accountable, and walk in strength. Good morning, men. Please open your Bibles to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. We'll begin this morning by doing a shout out. And today we're going to recognize a group that's been meeting since 1989. Team Shaw, men of faith at the Shaw Air Force Base Chapel in Sumter, South Carolina. Six men, uh, they meet there at the clubhouse every third Saturday. Uh, they've gone back. They're now using the video Bible uh, study with us. Uh, it's a military group of retired and active duty Air Force and Army men. Uh, they're led by William Oden. And so I wonder if you would join me in giving, uh, giving a military welcome to the Team Shaw Men of Faith. One, two, three. Hoorah. Yeah. Hoorah. We're good to have you with us, men. Thank you for joining us. So the series is The Man in the Mirror. Today we're going to be talking about accountability, the missing link. And the first thing I want us to talk about is, you know, why do men need accountability? You know, why do men need accountability? Well, you have goals for your life. You want to lead a life that is Christ-like. In fact, Romans 8.29 says that those whom God foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son Jesus. So you and I are on a path towards Christ's likeness and intimacy with him and spiritual maturity. But as you know, we have a tendency as men to, to get off track. So none of us ever got off track intentionally, right? I mean, nobody woke up this morning and thought to himself, today, I wonder what I can do to, you know, mess up my life. I used to play doubles tennis with a guy. He was my partner, and 
Uh, every time I would hit the ball into the net, which was frequent, he, he would get so upset with me. He said, I can't believe, I can't believe you did that. And after uh, the first few months of playing with him, I turned him one time and I just said, look, man, give me a break. Do you actually think I would ever intentionally hit the ball into the net? No, 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 no. None of us are, are, are intentionally doing any of these things. So the problem is, however, that we're prone to wander because we are like sheep. And as was said in the video at the front end, there is a battle going on. You are being hunted. You're a sheep. You're being hunted. Isolation is a problem for someone who is being hunted. I have mentioned it here before, but anybody who's ever watched the National Geographic Channel, the National Geographic Channel, knows that the predator, the lion, never goes after the herd. The, the predator, the lion, always goes after the one that's become isolated. And so isolation is a real problem. And when men, well, men do tend to become isolated more often than women because it's more in our nature to be loners. I'm not saying everybody, but you know, it is more in our nature. We use, it's a generalization, but we use generalizations. Why? Because they're generally true, <laughs> okay? So generally speaking, men do tend to become isolated. And when men become isolated, several things begin to happen. We begin to hear the voices of the culture. We begin to intermingle or intermarry with the culture. We tend to start doing what seems right in our own eyes because we're making, you know, we're just living by our own best thinking. We tend to exchange the truth of God for a lie, the glory of God for an idol. We tend to seek, start seeking the God or the gods that we want instead of the God who is. And we end up becoming cultural rather than biblical Christians. We become lukewarm lukewarm in our faith. So that the, the goal is a good goal. It's what we all want, but because of these things that we have to encounter, we have these, these results when we live in, 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 in isolation. So let me give you an example of how this plays out. Four couples, all in the same church, And over a period of about 12 months, these four husbands all had moral failures. They were all unfaithful to their wives. <coughs> Strip clubs, adultery, uh, addiction to pornography, uh, solicitation of prostitutes, that kind of thing. These are four Christian guys in churches. Now, Scroll forward about uh, 18 months, and two of these marriages have been restored, and two of the marriages have ended in ugly divorces with fierce custody battles, really messy divorces. What do you think was the difference in these two sets of two. What was different is that in the two men who ended up going through terrible divorces with ugly custody battles and so forth, is that those men were only on the fringe of the church. Those men lived in isolation. Those men were putting in a, a, a performance, if you will, but they were really secretly just doing what they wanted to do, living by their own ideas, because they had no one to whom they were giving an account for their lives. They had no discipleship in their lives. But the two men who were restored, it's, it's terrible what they, what they did and, and put their, their spouses and families through, but those two men who had their families and marriages restored, those men had some brothers in their lives who said, when those, when those guys said, 
I'm checking out. I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm leaving my wife. I'm leaving my family. They got up in, in, the, in their grill and they said, no, you're not. You're not going anywhere. And, and in one case, uh, one of the men was addicted to pornography. And so the, 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 the men that he was in relationships with in the church, they showed up at his house. They knocked on the door. He answered the door. They walked right by him. And they went and they seized his computer. And they ended up putting some filtering software on it. And that's just, that, that's not the answer, but that's, that's one of the things they did to express their, their love and their concern for him. Now let's look at the text. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should shame them and make them feel like dirt. Shun them and never again have anything to do with them. Oh, oh, no, no. This is not a text about what often happens. This is a text about what Jesus wants us to do. Oh, okay. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. This is the whole battle thing. Carry each other's burdens. Carry each other's burdens. Don't always put yourself in somebody else's shoes. How would you want to, to be handled were it you that were getting off track. You would, you would want somebody to, to try to restore you, to try to restore you gently, to deal kindly with you. That somebody would carry, help you carry your burden. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ is what? Yeah, it's the, law, it's, the, it's, the, it's the royal command, you know, love one another. Somebody said it right here. Who said it? Okay, gold star. Thank you. Now, turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. It's a few pages to the right. Phil, uh, or <laughs> scrolling, you know. Verse 3, chapter 2 of Philippians. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. And then this this is the part to, to drill down on. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. You know, there's a mandate in the Bible. The law of love is a mandate to care about other people, to care about what's happening to them. Turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. There's a passage in Proverbs 27, 6. It's on your sheet. The, the kisses of an enemy may be profuse, but faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. And then the passage in Ecclesiastes says this. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. Watch this. But pity, but pity. Take pity on the isolated man. The man who's in isolation, what should be your feeling towards the man who's isolated himself? Disdain, utter disdain. How could he do that? No, pity him, pity him. And if you're in isolation, we we all feel so sorry for you. We pity you. We pity you because that's what the scriptures tell us to do. Pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. That's what happened to the two men whose marriages blew up. 
They had no one to help them up. So, we're talking about why men need accountability. Men need accountability because this is how you stay on track. This is how you stay on track. And the big idea for the day, accountability means to be regularly answerable to qualified people for each of the key areas of our lives. Now, this is a definition uh, that we worked out here in this Bible study before I even wrote The Man in the Mirror. And, uh, and uh, so this is kind of like a good de facto definition for accountability. It's to be regularly answerable to qualified people for each of the key areas of our lives. And so now, let's take a look at what that looks like in practice. What does accountability look like in practice. Well, accountability should be understood. It's a tool. It's a tool. It's a, it's a spiritual discipline. Spiritual disciplines are spiritual habits that we develop to help us keep on track with the Lord. And I don't know of any, I don't know of any spiritual discipline more valuable than this one. The idea of, of sure, being in the Word of God, absolutely Top, top. Intimacy with Christ, spending time with the Lord, absolutely. But to, 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 to be in relationship with some other brothers who are helping me stay on track, this is something that is supreme in the, in the, in the area of spiritual disciplines. And so the first thing, let's just talk about the word answerable. Uh, what it means to be answerable, that, what it means to give an account. We don't need to talk about that. Any of you who have a job know what it means to be answerable. Even if, you, even if you own your own shop, your own business, you still have to answer to investors or to customers, to clients. Everybody is answerable. And to think, think about how naive it is to think that we would be answerable to a temporal boss and unanswerable to our eternal king. It makes no sense. Here at the state, all the, here is, you know, when you come to, like I, I say this about, about money, you know, when you think about money, all the benefits of money are temporal, all the risks of money are eternal. Accountability, you could say the same thing. You know, a lack of accountability, you know, in, in, in the temporal world, it, the risks are minor, but when you start talking about the state of your soul, uh, different story, different story. All right, and then to the key areas. So accountability means to be answerable, uh, to qualify people for uh, each of the key areas. So in the, in the book, we got this, this figure, this accountability iceberg, and the idea is that most of us are not, not, not in this room, not in our groups, but out in, out in the general community, most men are living their lives at the cliche level. New sports and weather. Maybe tools, maybe, maybe some cars, okay? But that's, that's, that's where most men are living their lives. But then the real you, the, the 90% of the, uh, what's below the waterline and the iceberg, that, that's your real life. That's your real life. That's the real you, the unexamined life, the secret thought life. We were talking about uh, these things through the weeks. Your purpose, priorities, goals, your ambitions, your relationships, uh, time and money, your, your, your morals, your, your emotions, uh, your sufferings, all of these things. That's who you are. And the question is, for all of us, are you talking about these things? And if you're not talking about these things, guess what? You are living in isolation. And to push the analogy a little bit, you're underwater, okay, in those areas. So that <clears throat> can translate to a very useful tool in this weekly one-hour accountability checkup card. Now, we have put some of these on your table. We've put enough on your table so that each of you can have two of them, I guess, if you would like. 
one for you and maybe one to give away. And this is organized. There, there are lots of different ways to, to organize the key areas of your life. But this has withstood the test of time. Organizing the key areas according to your different roles and how you actually spend your time. All right? So I'm going to take the unusual step of asking you to have one of these cards in your hand, and we're going to read through every word of this card together, me out loud, and I'm going to ask you to read along silently to yourself. On the front, it says, the weekly one-hour accountability checkup. Use these questions as a guide. It is not necessary to ask every question, but be sure to cover every area each week. Questions to start, icebreakers. How has God blessed this week what went right? What problem consumed your thoughts this week what went wrong? Okay, so that just gets the conversation lubricated, okay? And then you'll notice <clears throat> the big picture, the shaded areas are spiritual life, home life, work life, ministry, critical concerns, and then a prayer. Let's look at spiritual life. Notice under spiritual life, the bolded, Headers are God's Word, Prayer, Temptation, Confession, and Church. God's Word. Have you read it consistently? How often? How long? Why not? Will you next week? Now, you, you have to see right away that you have to be a humble person or willing to be a humble person to let somebody get in your grill about stuff like this, okay? Prayer. Describe your prayers for yourself, others, praise, worship, confession, gratitude. How is your relationship with Christ evolving? Temptation. How were you tempted this week? How did you respond? Confession. Do you have unconfessed sin? Church. Did you worship in church this week? Was your faith in Jesus strengthened? These are useful questions for you to be challenged with inspired with, called to give an answer for, home life, wife. If applicable, how is it with your wife? That means if you're married, for those of you who are wondering what if, if applicable means. Time, meaningful conversation, attitudes, intimacy, disappointments, irritations, her relationship with Jesus Christ, children, if applicable, how are your children? Giving encouragement to them, quantity and quality of time, values, education, spiritual welfare. Finances, how are your finances going? Debt, sharing, saving, spending, stewardship. Time, have you given your time to the ones who deserve it? Backside, another key area, work life. Heading is job, how are things going? Career, relationships, temptation, stress problems, working too much, okay? Are you getting the idea that, that on this little business card are all the questions that you need or would want to get the right answers to? <laughs> Ministry life, making disciples. This is the big change if you're using the, uh, the former version of the card. Making disciples. What have you done this week to, number one, call someone to live in Christ, salvation or abide. Number two, equip them to live like Christ, to grow or train them. Or number three, send them to live for Christ, to make disciples love and serve others. Witness. How have you shared your faith? Service. Now, you don't need to be doing everything every week. Uh, not, not only do you not need to be answering every question every week, you don't need to be doing all this every week either. But the point is, is that these are the, all the rubrics that you will want to make sure, that we all want to make sure that, that we have, have covered. Service. 
What have you done for someone else this week that can't be repaid? The poor encouragement, mercy service to others. Critical concerns, rubrics, God's will. Do you feel you are in the center of God's will and sense of peace? Wow, now there's a seminal question. Thought life. What secret are you wrestling with? This would be like from last, the last message on the secret thought life. Priorities. <clears throat> Are your priorities in the right order? Integrity. How is your moral and ethical behavior? High risk. How are you doing in your personal high risk area? That might be, you might be a credit card junkie. You might uh, have a, a gambling problem. You might have same sex attraction. You might be an, uh, a, 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 an alcoholic or a drug addict. Or you might uh, be into pornography. Uh, your personal high-risk area. When you develop a trusting, accountable relationship, these are the kinds of things that you want to have somebody pushing you a little bit. These are the kinds of things that even uh, the, the, those four men, they didn't have anybody in their life asking them the, these questions, pushing them on this. Now, the two guys that had their marriages saved, in the end, the guys that were in his group, they did the right thing. But if it had been an accountability group from the beginning, you have to wonder, would that have gotten that far? And then <clears throat> transparency. Are the visible you and the real you, as we saw in the iceberg, consistent in your relationships, and if not, in what ways? Faithfulness. Have you been faithful in the key areas above? In other words, uh, if you just lied, you know, <laughs> And if not, what's your plan? And then prayer closed with 10 to 15 minutes of prayer. Focus on the concerns of the week. I've never read through the card before from beginning to end. But isn't it amazing? I gave this card <clears throat> to one of my close friends right after it was developed. And I said, would you take a look at this and give me your opinion? It wasn't finalized yet, I guess. <clears throat> And he sat there and he read it over just like we read it now. But he read it to himself. He flipped it over, he read the back. And then he just sat there sort of staring at the card for, seemed like a long time, probably a couple of minutes. And he got moisture in his eyes. He said, isn't it interesting that everything we need to know to keep our life on track will fit on the front and back of a business card. Think about that, men. Everything you need, everything you need, everything you need to monitor, to, to work on, to keep on track, everything you need <laughs> will fit on the front and the back of a business card. My goodness. So to be answerable, to give an account for each of these key areas, on a regular basis, that just means, uh, how, how, many, how many of you play golf? Raise your hands high if you play golf. Now keep them up, all right? Now of those of you who play golf, how many of you play golf regularly? Keep, keep them up, the rest of you can put your hands down. All right. Now, of those who have your hands up that you play regularly, how many of you have a standing game? Keep your hands up. You notice something interesting there? I've done this with lots of different groups over the years, and, and the guys that have a regular standing golf game or a tennis game or whatever it is, they tend to have it scheduled into the calendar. And it's very infrequent that you will find men who regularly do a sport that don't have a standing game. And, and so it is with accountability to have have a, to do this regularly, to have it scheduled in, that it's sacrosanct, that you will not violate it. You know, I did this for 32 years, once a week with a guy, 
And uh, one of our former table leaders, who's now deceased, 32 years, once a week. And, but it was, it, was, it, was, it was an appointment that everybody that I work with, they understood, you do not schedule over this appointment. Oh, yo, oh yeah, in the early days, I mean, you're, people are pushing on it to see if I really mean it, you know. To do it with regularity. And then the final thing, just qualified people, I just say this, you're not looking for a spiritual boss. You're looking for a fellow pilgrim. Try to have accountability with your wife in as many areas as possible. Never have accountability with another woman because the risks and the temptations are too great. And there are a few other things that you can read about in the book. The big idea is this for the day. Accountability means to be regularly answerable to qualified people for each of these key areas in our lives. And now, just how do you get started? How do you get started? Men, uh, my own experience has been now, over all these years, we've tried many times getting guys started in this, is that really about 15% is roughly the stick rate on men who will do accountability. So I'm, I'm well aware that after this morning, that probably, and this is among the most spiritual guys in the world, about 85% of you just are not, you're gonna, you're gonna say, wow, that was great. That's exactly, that's exactly what I need, and then you're, you're not gonna do it. I, I understand that, all right? But, but, for the 15% of you who do want to build more accountability into your life, and I urge you, I urge you to be part of that 15%. You need to understand that this is not going to happen just because it's a really, really good idea. This is not going to happen just because it's really, really important. And this is not going to happen just because you really, really now know what to do. Get a group together, meet once a week, go over the card, okay? It's not going to happen for those reasons. It's going to happen because you, right now, make a decision that you are going to form an accountability group. I recommend four people. No less than three, certainly not two. Two men will lead each other astray from time to time. It's happened here. Three, four men, five, you're pressing the limits. The problem with five men is, is that you just don't have enough air time for every man each week. Four guys, maybe three. Now you know what to do. So. You make the decision that you're going to do this right now. Let me say this. If you want to do this, if you're among the 15% that want to do this, you need to decide to do this, that you're going to do this right now because if you walk out through that door and you have not already made the decision that you're going to do it, you're not going to do it. That's just the way it is. Now. Okay, so maybe you're the exception to the rule. I don't think so. I don't think so. If you want to do this, go ahead and make it happen. <clears throat> Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, we looked at last week. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out any offensive way in me and lead me in your everlasting way. It's going to work better if you do it with some brothers. It's just going to work better if you do it with some brothers. If you could have done all of the things that we talked about and managed all the key areas of your lives that we talked about this morning, the way that you wanted to manage them, guess what? it would have already happened by now. <laughs> it would have already happened by now. So open yourself up, get some other brothers, open yourself up, do the accountability, 
which is to be regularly answerable for each of the key areas of our lives to qualified people. And, and, just in, and, 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 and that will help you meet the goal of this Christ-likeness, becoming more Christ-like, more intimacy with him, to be more spiritually mature. The goals that we set at the very beginning of the message that we all have in common. This, this is, there's nothing that I would ever recommend to you that I would recommend more than this one thing. Let us pray. Our dearest Father, we, we, all, are, we all really do have the same goals, and I just pray for these men, Lord, that, uh, that each of them would uh, be able to um, figure out how you want them to respond to this message. Uh, I usually don't even come on as strong as I did this morning, Lord, for a particular course of action, but Lord, I just, uh, I know what this has meant in my life, and I just, I just hope the same thing for, for, for every man here. Many of these men, Lord, already, because we've talked about this many times over the years, many of these men, far more than 15% in this group, already have this accountability. But for those men who are online, maybe just hearing about this for the first time, uh, or uh, somebody new here who uh, really hasn't thought deeply about who's holding them to give an answer for uh, the eternal parts of their life. I just pray, God, that you would draw them into uh, a humble uh, response and, and a desire to have you search them with the help of some accountability partners. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.